to my channel creative art i am nilima and today we are going to do this huge casting of flowers and decorating it with this beautiful gold foil in the border casting is a very simple process through which you can preserve the memory of any of your favorite flower or greens you like or you have grown for the first time and the technique itself is a very easy that you can try it yourself at home so friends do watch the complete video to make it yourself and do subscribe my channel friends for more creative art painting videos and do press the bell icon to get notification for each video i post every week now let's quickly check out all the materials to make plants or flower casting you're just going to need two important things the first one is casting powder you can also use quick fix white cement and the second one is a natural clay you can use any brand natural clay available other than that you can also color it or decorate it with different decorating elements for this flower casting i have used acrylic colors light green neon pink fab green magenta white and paint brushes selection of colors should completely depend on the color of natural flowers you have selected for casting i'm going to use a plant saucer which actually gives the shape to the cast these saucers do come in various size and shapes so you can make your own choices and we are going to need a roller to roll the clay and flat it next to protect our casting and give the colors a longer life i'm going to use the artist picture varnish as this is a spray varnish the application is very easy and it is compatible to multiple surfaces and this kind of 3d structures and a multi-purpose hanger to hang my casting which is very handy if you don't want to frame your wall decors and simply hang them on wall for decorating my cast piece i'm going to use gliding glue from little birdie and gliding flakes from little birdie all these materials will be listed in the description box below with their links from where you can buy them online so let's start the video now friends these are some of the wild vegetations I have freshly collected just before we are going to start pressing them in clay. So here we have some flowers with whale, few red flowers, these are pink. You can collect any wild vegetation you find in your garden or around you. This is how all of them look. I have also got few beans, so these are few wild beans. And now let's start pressing them in clay. Here is the natural clay which I have separated in chunks and now I'm going to give it a very nice mix. Here I have used a little bit of water to mix it, make it more smooth and soft. And now here you can see how easily it gets separated and mixed up in each other. So let's start by making a ball out of it. Now our clay is ready and you can clearly see how soft and smooth our clay is. So I'll place it right on the center and now I'm going to use my roller to flat this clay. Remember friends that we want a thickness of about 1 cm so do not flat it very much. Make it smooth and equal from all the directions you don't want any bulge any type of unevenness on the clay so now our clay is flat i'm going to sprinkle some talcum powder this is one trick i love to do with all my clay art smoothen it out on the surface this gives me a very very clear and a good imprint of the things i love to make and now this is the base i'm going to use for my casting so i'm just roughly going to take a measurement i did got a good measurement so i have to place everything right inside this circle and let's start by placing my best best piece which is this one i really want a very very good and clear imprint of this part so first of all you should definitely decide a direction you want to place it and if there are many leaves you can just skip that leaves clear out the surface as much as i can now it is very much clear i think this would be the best direction to place it 
we have a lot going on in the bottom now finally I have completed placing all the flowers and leaves the way I wanted them to be so now just from one direction I'm going to start pressing them in making sure that every time I get a flower down this time not on a leaf I have got a very very nice imprint of all the flowers and then I'm going to do a very very simple step which is of course cutting the excess clay first we check the marking this is it now using your knife or your palette knife whatever you have cut the excess clay and now remove the excess clay separate it very very gently just before starting this DIY I did place a layer of clean fill beneath the clay so using a scissor I will be taking that part so now you see it's very easy to slide I'll take it in my hand gently lifting it up this is my base I'll remove the clean fill from the bottom placing it right on our place settle the entire piece very nicely now I have completed doing some finishing touches from the borders so that we may get a very level edgings. So next start our next part which is the most important picking up the leaves and stems very very carefully without disturbing the imprint. So here I'm using a tweezer and lifting up the flowers and leaves. This one is going to be difficult because this was the biggest biggest piece you can clearly see the flowers did have few seeds which are coming out wow the imprint is just so beautiful now after imprinting on clay let's start mixing the casting powder so this is the casting powder I'm going to use you can also use a quick fix cement so I'm using a cup for measuring as the settling time of this casting powder is very quick so we have to do this as quick as possible here I have one cup of casting powder and I'm going to add two cups of water I'm going to mix distilled water that is purified water with this casting powder and then using a spoon give it a very very nice mix Okay, the casting ratio for water and the casting powder is 3 parts of casting powder with 2 parts of water. Now here our casting solution is ready. You can clearly see there are no lumps and this is the thickness. So let's start pouring it from one side in this way. And then shake it from all the sides so that the bubbles will come to the top. And now we will let it rest for at least 2 hours as the settling time is just 30 minutes but I want to keep it longer and give it the full casting time. Now after 2 hours the casting paste has got dried up completely and this is how it looks. It is quite strong and now we can remove it. So this is how you have to remove it. Hold your plastic base and then gently try to separate it from each side of the plaster of Paris in this way you'll clearly observe a separation do this all around once or twice when all the plaster of Paris is separated from the plastic simply try giving the push from below which is this part using four fingers in this way upwards direction and this is how your clay will also get separated from the base and then start popping it out by simply pressing all around the base and the clay okay from one side I have started receiving it I got a complete cake of clay gently place it start removing the clay and wow such a beautiful beautiful imprint we have got okay this is the entire piece of clay 
let's place it this is one of the most beautiful imprints i have received very very beautiful as there are very fine particles of clay i can see here other than that everything is so clean and clear i'm going to use my flat hair brush and remove each and every particle of clay from this part and then i'll show you how does it looks okay now after cleaning the cast this is how it looks the leaves and flowers are clearly visible and i just absolutely love the clear imprint of stems leaves and the flower as well as the seeds of the flower you can see right at the bottom which are attached to the stem it will be really fun coloring it I just got one drawback in this casting which was the sides and after casting this is how the finishing I have got. So this is one precaution I would take in my next casting so that I get this kind of smooth finishing imprint of my plants and flowers but I can also rectify it using some gold foil or other decorative items. But for now friends let's start coloring the leaves and the flowers using some acrylic color. You can also use watercolors. I'm going to use the greeny 65 fevacryl acrylic color to color the leaves using my paintbrush. So for this friends what we have to do is just use a little bit of acrylic color with a lot and lot of water in your paintbrush. So that will give a very very natural look. Here I have a lost imprint of a few leaves but still as I know so I'm going to draw them. Just follow the leaves wherever they are imprinted and using your paintbrush color the leaves completely. Always make sure that you have enough water and less color. Now I have completed coloring green on all the leaves and this is how it looks till it gets dry and before starting coloring the flower let's cover up the unfinished edges and for that I'm going to use the gold flakes. This part is totally not a compulsion but you can do it to add a more attractive look. So our first step is to use the gliding glue which looks like this. And then using a paintbrush, just apply the gliding glue wherever you want to apply the gold flakes. And after 15 minutes, when your gliding glue turns transparent like this, as I have already applied gliding glue on the parts where I want to place the flakes. So now let's start placing the flakes. Make sure friends that your gliding glue is completely dry and transparent. Pick up the gold foil one by one in this way. They are very very fine thin sheets and gently apply it on the place where you want to apply. You can also use a very smooth paint brush to do it. I'm going to do this same process of placing gold foil all around the casting piece by piece covering each and every part wherever I have applied glue. Now we let it get dry for at least 15 minutes more and then we can start scraping out the extra gold foil. Now after 15 minutes the gold foil is completely dry. So using a paint brush just brush out the excess gold foil which you don't want to place or which just have some rough edges. It will come out and give it a smoother look. So this is how you have to do it. Use a paint brush and rub all along. To remove that excess gold foil and then this is how you will get a smooth finishing now let's get back with the coloring before for the leaves i have used light green color and now i'm going to use sap green color and what we have to do is simply using the sap green color in your paint brush with a lot of water give the outlining to the leaf in this way then again take just a little bit of water and merge it with your previous color. So this is going to add a natural look to the leaf. Here you can clearly observe the difference. And you can clearly observe this looks much more natural than before. So we are going to repeat the same step on all the leaves.
Now after coloring all the leaves, this is how beautiful and natural they look. So now let's start coloring the flowers. And for flowers, I'm going to use 023 Brilliant Purple color from Camel. And mixing it with a lot of water and a paintbrush. Just tap, tap, tap the colors all over the flower first in this way. Make sure that always you're using enough amount of water and less amount of color in your paintbrush. Do the finishing touch using just a little bit more amount of water and some other brush, a tiny brush and spread the colors all around. If you can see a rough edges, just use a lot of water and clean out those rough edges because we don't want any extra color of the flower. After using the magenta, I'm going to use a neon pink color, mix a little bit of magenta with it and you'll get a color like this. Using which we're going to just highlight the flowers and this will give a bright look as you can see for this one just on the top after using the neon pink color you can clearly see how bright and beautiful our painting looks but now let's make it look much more natural and for that I'm going to add white color this time on the bottom of these dots as you can see here make sure to take a lot of water in your paintbrush while doing this part this is just to show that the seeds are ripened enough Make sure there is not a lot of white but just enough white to give that part a lighter look than the whole flower. Now after completing the leaves, flowers and all the coloring part, there is just one part left to color the stems. For that, I'm going to use the same magenta color as we used in the flowers in the beginning and then lightly color the stems using the magenta color in this way to make the leaves look more natural do take some extended color on them in this way after completing the coloring part this is how beautiful bright and natural our casting of flowers look it absolutely looks as if this is a natural and real and the gold foil is absolutely complementing the cast and also hiding out the mistakes I made. It also gives a look as if this is framed or as if it was taken out right from the ground and the shine of the gold is absolutely flawless and I don't think it would need any kind of frame because the gold foil itself gives so much beauty to it. Other than that, you can hang it using this kind of multi-purpose hanger. The instructions will be given on the back side of this hanger. And to give this bright colors a long life, do use artist picture varnish. This is a very simple spray varnish. You just have to spray two to three layers each after one to two hours and let it get dry. So this will be dust proof and you can clean it easily whenever you want. So friends, do try making casting of your favorite flowers and plants as this is one of the easiest DIY you can do at home. And do tell me in the comments below, what do you think about this? This technique and if you do like my videos friends please do like share and subscribe my channel thank you for watching